Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Nora. Today I'll be showing you how to make your body's draft. Your body's draft is very important because you can use it to make any top and it can even be modified to make a dress. So let's get started. So to draft your body's measurement, you are going to be needing a tape measure, a pencil or a marker, a hip curve ruler, a French, an armhole curve or French curve, a straight ruler, your measurement sheet, and your pattern paper. So let's get started. First of all, at the top of your pattern paper, it's good to leave a margin of two inches if you have enough. Two inches becomes your top line. Remember in my previous video, I told you that measurements are divided into two, vertical and horizontal. So I'm going to be applying those measurements. I'm starting with the vertical measurements, measurements along the body. So I start with the top line where all the measurements will begin. This top line is my shoulder line. Next, I've marked my chest line. I've marked my bust point. I've marked my shoulder to under bust. I've marked my shoulder to true waist or half length. I've made, marked my shoulder to hip and I've marked the length of the dress from the shoulder. So these are all my vertical measurements which I have extended. Now how did I get my chest line here? I simply divided my bust by 6 and added 1.5 inches. This is standard. You divide your bust by 6 and add 1.5 inches. Now at the top line here you notice I have two markings. The first marking here is 2.5 inches, 2.75 inches. That's two three quarters from the beginning of the measurement. I mark two three quarters here, as you can see. Then next, I mark seven and a half inches, as you can see. At that point, I come down by one inch. At the seven and a half inch point, I come down by one inch, as you can see here, one inch. This is standard when you are drafting your bodies. Now, I have gotten my chest line. The chest measurement starts from that one inch. In my case, my bust is 39 divided by six is 6.5 inches. And if I add 1.5 inches to it, that makes eight. So if you measure this line, this is eight inches here, as you can see. Now, having gotten that, I will apply my true shoulder measurement. My true shoulder measurement is 16 inches. That is eight here. So I'm going to be using 8 inches, which is my true measurement. If yours is less, you simply go in. If it is more, you simply go out. So I'll mark 8 inches also here to make sure that it is straight. I've done that and I'll connect the two lines in a straight parallel line. So having done that, I'll begin to take all my horizontal measurements or measurements across my body starting from my bust my bust here is 39 inches dividing that by four is nine three quarter remember everything is on fold front and back is on fold so you are dividing by four so my bust is nine three quarter inches i'm going to be marking nine and three quarter inches here along this part i mark it there that's my bust measurement but I will choose to add an ease of three quarter inches. Ease helps you to have the dress fitted but not too tight. So you have free movement. So I'll add three quarter inches to this here. And that is my ease. Now I'll move next to this is my bust point. The measurement for bust is at the chest line. Now I'll move to my waistline. The next measurement is my waist measurement. My waist round is 35 inches, dividing that by 4 is 8 and 3 quarter inches. So I'm going to be marking 8 and 3 quarter inches here. I'm not going to be adding any ease here. Instead, I will be adding, taking away a dart of 1 inch at the waist. So I will replace that dart that I have taken here. I will pay it back here. That is 1 inch for my waist. Next is my hip measurement. My hip is 44 inches, divided by 4 is 11. So I mark, I may choose to add half inches here for my hip, just for ease of movement. And then I keep the same 11 and a half here. So having done that, I'm going to be connecting all these points together.
starting from this I connect that and then connect it back to my hip measurement now you can choose to use your hip curve for this part just to give it a nice curve so that it is smooth and not so pointy as you can see so I'm going to be using my hip curve here if you don't have a hip curve you can use a straight ruler but be sure to smoothen out all pointy edges you don't need any pointy edges in your measurement so I've done that here it's not pointy anymore now having gotten all these measurements I will quickly go back to my neckline I would like to keep a neckline of four and a half inches here I mark four and a half inches and then the front neckline I would like to keep five inches while for the back I keep one inch standard keep one inch now if you want to style it you can later style this but this is just the basic so I'm going to be connecting this to that point to this point same here I'll be connecting this to my five inch point here and back here again okay so having done that I will just take my hip curve ruler uh, my French curve and give a nice neckline here because this is the neckline I want for the back now if you want something else you can do a v-neck you can do a curve neck you can do a princess sweetheart here whatever you want is up to you so for this one I'll just be keeping a simple round neck here as you can see so this is the back and this is the front now at the armhole point I am going to be measuring from this part to this part. Remember this part is no longer needed. The shaded area is discarded. So my measurement starts from here to here. Half of this is 4 inches. This is 8 inches. Half of it is 4 inches. At this 4 inch point, I come in by 3 quarter inches. Standard. This is standard measurement here. I come in by 3 quarter of an inch. And that will be my front armhole. The front armhole is usually deeper than the back to allow for free movement, ease of movement. So I'm going to be using my French curve to connect. From this point, I take my French curve and connect that point. And then use the under to take it back. So that is my front armhole. And then for the back, I will simply do the same just place at that midpoint and bring it right here and then I have my back armhole so this is the front and this is the arm the back front back back neckline front neckline so I'm done with this part next is the dart remember in my previous measurements I told you that we take the measurement of our apex to apex or boss pan in my case it's eight inches so what I will simply do is, I'll measure 4 inches along the bust line, the bust point. Half of 8 is 4 inches. And mark it straight down. In my previous video, I told you that you need your apex to apex or bust pan. Now mine is 8 inches. Dividing that by 2 is 4 inches. So I mark 4 inches here, straight from the bust line to the hip line. Now my bust, my dart will start one inch below this bust point. Your dart does not start at your bust point or nipple. It starts about one inch below that and ends just two inches below your actual hip. So I'll mark two inches here, the beginning of my dart and the end. Now at my waist point, I'm going to be taking half inches on either side half half that is the one inches which I the one inch which I later paid back here 
So I'll collect now. I take my ruler and connect. Take the ruler and connect. I also bring it back here. Connect. So this is my dart. Now, it is important to note that if you are making a blouse, like what we call the Igbo blouse in Nigeria, beyond just leaving it like this, if you want to make an Igbo blouse, it's important to come up two inches from the very end of your blouse length. You come up two inches, as I do here, and then use your hip curve ruler and bring it back this gives your blouse a nice fitting bring it back there gives your blouse a very nice fit now if you want to take it even further you can go four inches but if you go four inches this edge will just sit just at the beginning of your skirt so the higher you go the higher this blouse top just sits so two inches is just fine for what we wear, mostly our traditional wears. So this is my regular basic bodies draft or basic bodies block. I can modify this to do practically a lot of things. I can modify it to make a bustier blouse. I can even modify it to make a dress. So having done that, it is important to note that if you are cutting your back measurement there is allowance for zip so i've just put a, another pattern paper here just to help you see that you need a zipper allowance so assuming this is everything i have here i added one inch allowance at the back just for the back then what i did at the middle at this my waist point 17 inch point or back yoke yours could be higher or could be lower is good to measure i came in by half inch here this is one inch or three quarter of an inch if you take one inch it's good to come in by half inch if you choose to also use three quarter of an inch for your zip allowance try to come in by half inch here it will give your back a nice curve so you avoid your blouse protruding at the back yoke as you see sometimes people make blouses and you see it protruding at the back yoke that is not very nice so you have to come in in a c curve kind of like a c to relax you come in here and gradually bring your hand out so i'm going to be cutting my blouse now i'll be cutting the back first and then subsequently i'll cut the front to cut the back i go this way this way this way and then subsequently I'll cut the front now to make it easy for you you could use a tracing wheel and trace this dart it will appear on the back so I will trace this dart now to the back and then you see how I'll modify the back dart even further So to make it easy for you, you remember the back has a zipper allowance. I have just marked one inch of zipper allowance here to show that this is the back. And then what I'm simply going to do from this point is to use my tracing wheel and trace out major lines like the chest line, the waist line, the hip line, the, the length of the blouse, the sides. You know, the back arm hold, just the back arm hold, the back neck line. I'm going to be using my tracing wheel to do that. Then the dart line here in the front. So I have done that here in the back already, as you can see. 
The only difference between the back and the front is that the dart in the back here does not start from the bust point. It starts, we start counting from the chest line. From the chest line, we come down one inch. But every other thing is the same. From the hip line, we go up two inch. So that's the difference between the back dart. The back dart is longer. We start counting from the chest line, come down one inch. But from the hip line, as in the front, we also go up two inches. So this is our basic bodice pattern. At the back here, you can see I've given a C curve just to make my back smooth. So that there is no poker at the back. So I come in at the waist point by half inch. So from here, I give a slant line. Come out, come in here by half inch and gradually bring my hand out to come out here. If you come in here by half inch, remember to account for that half inch here. Pay it back here and retrace. I have done that already. I've paid back my half inch here and I've retraced it. So this is how to create your basic bodice block. With this block, you can make an Igbo blouse, you can make a princess seam blouse, an off-shoulder blouse. You can even make a dress. So next, we are going to be using this basic bodice block to create something classic. Thank you very much for watching. I would like you to please comment, like, subscribe, share, so that together we can learn fashion in a fun way.